I'm discussing the gas laws in the context of thermodynamics, the study of heat and temperature, and as the bridge to molecular theory. The idea that matter at the smallest scales is made up of discrete atoms and molecules. Discrete meaning that although there's an enormous, really mind-bogglingly large number of them, you can count them. They're discrete, not continuous. And you usually learn the gas laws in chemistry, and it's just this thing out of nowhere that's thrown at you. That's just assumed to be part of the subject of chemistry. PV equals NRT. So what? Why are you learning this? And the simple reason, at least initially why you learn it, is that it's a system that you can understand on the basis of these macroscopic measurable quantities, pressure, volume, and temperature. You know, solids, for example, also have properties which change based on temperature and pressure. Under extreme changes of pressure, solids are squeezed or less squeezed by the force of air molecules pushing on them. That's what pressure is. And their volume changes as a result. And solids can also expand or contract based on the temperature. That's certainly an important effect. For example, railroad tracks can contract in extreme cold. But relatively speaking, these are small effects compared to what happens to gases. So it's just a system that can be understood on the basis of these macroscopic measurable quantities, and that's why you learn it. But there's a more important reason that you learn these gas laws in chemistry, especially in relation to this idea of Avogadro's number, which is that the equation PV equals NRT, the way I like to view it is PV over RT equals N, a constant, a constant depending on the amount of stuff that you have. It's what we call extensive as opposed to intensive, like temperature or pressure. Now, while that constant N depends on the amount of gas in some sense, it's not equal to the mass. And usually the simple way that we understand the amount of stuff that you have is with mass. To put it most simply, the definition of mass is that if I have an object of mass M, and then I add another identical object, I have a total mass of 2m, a third object, mass 3m, and so forth. That's traditionally how we understand mass in the simple way. But in PV over RT equals n, the moles is not equal to the mass. It's related to the mass. In fact, it's proportional to the mass, meaning that if you double the amount of gas in the chamber, you double the mass, you also double the number of moles. You double that constant. But the moles still isn't equal to the mass because different gases at the same P, V, T, and N can have different masses. I can have identical chambers with identical quantities for every term in the equation, but the chambers weigh a different amount because different gases have different molar masses. So if I have, for example, oxygen in a chamber, O2, at some temperature, pressure, and volume, and let's say I have one mole, that will weigh 32 grams. But if I have hydrogen, H2, in an identical chamber at the same temperature, pressure, and volume, and I also have one mole of this H2, that will weigh two grams. So I have every term on both sides of the equation, including the N, the moles, that represents the amount of stuff, in this case, one mole for each, but the chambers weigh different amounts. And don't forget that N is still proportional to the mass. So that if I add 32 more grams of O2, bring the total to 32 plus 32 equals 64 grams, then I will have two moles. And my equation will read PV over RT equals two. And if I add twice as much hydrogen, another two grams, bring the total to two plus two equals four, my equation will read PV over RT equals two again just like with the O2 chamber. So the fact that I have a quantity which measures the amount of stuff in the sense that it's proportional to the mass, but is not equal to the mass in the sense that different types of substances can have that same constant measuring that amount of stuff, but still have different masses. This led Avogadro to suggest that the constant measured the number of molecules in the chamber. Of course, number of moles isn't directly equal to the number of molecules, but it's just a unit conversion that's the same for every gas. And the resolution of how you can have different gases with different constants, when it's still an extensive quantity proportional to mass, is that the gas is made up of a very large number of discrete atoms and molecules, 
And these molecules can have different masses for different gases, but the equation only cares about the number of them, not the mass.